Hey everybody, welcome back to the next video in our Discover Llama Index tutorial series. My name is Logan, I'm an engineer at Llama Index, and today I'm going to walk through a tutorial on document management using Llama Index. And specifically, I'm going to cover how to manage a data source that's constantly refreshing with new documents. But before we dive into that, let's quickly cover how storage works in Llama Index. So to start with, of course, you have your base index that you created. Uh, but this index is kind of propped up by three key uh, data structures. Uh, we have the index struct, the doc store, and optionally the vector store if you're using a vector index. Uh, I'm going to walk through each of these components individually. So first of all, the index struct basically defines a basic view over your data. Uh, so it's keeping track of the nodes that you can use during the query and then also organizing those into a certain view. So maybe it's a table for a keyword table index, maybe it's a list for the list index. Um, and so using this index struct, it knows which nodes to pull from the doc store to use for a query. And speaking of the doc store, this is where all the actual text that you've inserted into your index is stored. So when you insert a document, it's chunked into nodes and these nodes are stored in the doc store. On top of that, we keep track of some reference doc information. Uh, specifically for each node, we keep track of which original kind of input document it came from. Uh, and on top of that, we also keep track of any metadata that you assigned to that document when you input it. So sometimes you might assign, you know, a file name or a timestamp to a document, uh, and we keep track of that here in the doc store. And next, the last piece is the vector store, which is used only for vector indexes. Uh, our default vector store is in memory, and it just maintains a mapping of node to embedding. Uh, if you're using a vector store integration, uh, it, what actually ends up happening is that your entire index is stored in the vector store. So the index struct and doc store actually don't get used once you create the index. So you could create the index and not have to worry about persisting because everything is saved in the vector store. Uh, this is kind of a unique case, uh, a neat, unique functionality, and we detail a full list of vector stores that kind of operate this way uh, at this link here. And like I said, we have many vector store integrations and we're adding more every week. So with this out of the way, you kind of understand how storage works in Llama Index. Uh, now we can go through a little tutorial where we're gonna see how we can index data that's constantly refreshing. In this case, we have messages coming from Discord. You know, they're constantly updating. So in this notebook, um, I'm gonna kind of walk through, I've dumped Discord from two different dates from the Llama Index Discord, uh, specifically the help channel. Uh, so if we go here and list this directory, I have two dumps of the entire channel from two different dates. So obviously the one from June 2nd here is gonna have more messages than the one from uh, May 25th, but there's got a lot of overlap between these two messages uh, because this newer JSON will only contain, you know, all the original messages plus the newer ones that were added since this date. So just to start with, let's just pretend that we only have this JSON to start with. You know, we haven't dumped this newer one yet. Uh, and let's just quickly explore what's in this JSON. So if we load the JSON and print a few kind of things about it, we can see that it has just over 5,000 messages. Each message has a bunch of different things like timestamp, ID, uh, author, um, things of that nature. And then we could print the first and last message uh, just to see that it's actually working. Uh, and indeed, these are messages from our Discord. Now, this is just a raw list of messages. Uh, and in our help channel, we usually organize things into threads where you know someone will post a question and in the thread, we'll solve the issue. Uh, so for this particular problem, if we want to index these messages, it's gonna be con more convenient if we group them into threads. Uh, so I created a quick Python script here that you can uh, view later on after this video that will group them into threads uh, so that we can more easily insert them into an index later on. So I'm gonna run that script. It's written to conversation docs.json. If we open that and kind of inspect what is actually in there, uh, we can see that each thread in this JSON has two keys, uh, the thread itself and some metadata. In the metadata, we have the timestamp and sort of an ID for the thread. And then obviously for the thread, we have just the thread itself. So now that we have all this kind of organized nicely, uh, it's really easy to insert this into Llama Index. So first of all, we're gonna create our document objects or our list of documents. 
Um, so we can iterate over all the threads that I've loaded here and create our document using the thread text. We can set the doc ID to the thread ID, and this is gonna be important later on uh, because this is gonna make refreshing our index with new data really easy when we explicitly set the doc ID. Uh, and then I also save the date field in the extra info kind of metadata dictionary here. Uh, the next step, we can create our index. Uh, this is going to be, uh, take a few seconds here because there is like 5,000 documents. Um, well, not quite 5,000 documents, we grouped it into threads. So it'll be a bit less. Um, so right now what this is doing is it's pinging the OpenAI's API, uh, specifically the text ADA2 model uh, and sending basically our documents and we're getting back an embedding vector. So if we just wait for this to finish, so now that that's done, we can double check uh, that we ingested documents properly. So each index has this ref doc info property, which is kind of a mapping to the original doc IDs that we input. Uh, and it's a mapping to the extra info that we gave it, as well as the ID of each node it was broken into. Um, so we could do a quick sanity check here that indeed we ingested 767 documents and then the length of our input documents was also 767. So the index has properly inserted uh, all our documents. Now we can also double check that uh, the other properties made it in as well. So if I grab the ID of the first thread and try to access that from the ref doc info dictionary property, uh, we could see that indeed that first thread was broken into a single node uh, and it also the timestamp was carried along with it. Perfect, so things are working. Um, we can quickly save this index to disk to make sure that we don't have to you know, spend all the tokens to index this again. Uh, so here I save it to a directory called storage and then here I load it again uh, and then double check that our ref doc info is still the same length, so indeed uh, it's still 767, so it's saved and loaded properly. But now, let's go back to our original data dump that we had from Discord. We had that newer set of messages, right? So if we go back and open this newer set of messages from this JSON, we can get a another view into what we actually saved. Uh, and now, instead of just over 5,000 messages, we have 5,286 messages. So we have about 200 more messages that were dumped in this JSON. Now we could just recreate our entire index from scratch uh, using this, but one, it's gonna be slow again. Uh, and two, you're just gonna be wasting tokens because you know we've sent all these tokens to OpenAI, we paid for it. Uh, we don't need to re-index them again. So we can group these back into threads using my handy script. We can quickly inspect that this worked. Yes, we have our thread with our thread and metadata. Still looks good. We can create a set of new documents. So loading the documents from this latest dump. And we can see you know, how many new documents or how many new threads did we actually get in this latest Discord dump? 13, uh, so it's good. So we have 13 new threads in the kind of week between these dumps and we can also insert these or refresh these into the index. Um, now what this is going to do is it's going to do kind of two kind of checks. So since we've explicitly set the doc ID, it can reference the doc ID in these new documents, compare to the existing ones, and if the content has changed, you know, maybe a thread got longer uh, or something like that, uh, it will then be, you know, updated in the index or if that doc ID is not present in the index, it will insert it. And here I've added just an extra kind of uh, keyword argument here to delete from doc store. Now by default, uh, this will not delete it from the doc store. It will only delete it from the index struct when we do the refresh. And this is because many indexes can share the same doc store. So we kind of want to be careful when we delete from the doc store. In this case, we have a single index uh, it's fine to delete from the doc store, so we could specify that here. So we can run this, uh, and what this is going to return is a Boolean list, basically indicating which of these new documents was actually refreshed or inserted 
into the index. Um, so if we print the sum of these booleans, we can get a count. Um, and we can see that 15 docs were refreshed. Now this is interesting because we only had 13 new threads or 13 new documents to insert, uh, but 15 actually got refreshed. If we do a little bit of investigation uh, that I've conveniently pre-done, so I know the index is to check here, uh, we can see that you know all 13 of the new documents were refreshed into the index, but we can see a couple of extra ones here and here that were also refreshed. If we quickly compare those threads in both the new documents and the original documents, we can see that the new documents has more replies to the thread. So basically the refresh function has figured out that, oh, hey, this new document has the same doc ID, but the content has changed. So I need to refresh that in my index. And as we can see, it did do that. And that's it. Uh, links in the description will be available for relevant sections of the documents, as well as a link to the notebook that was used in this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new.